coming up. And I'm just curious, you know, what was the process like to get this on TV and to select the fights and how much input did you actually have in this? Uh, well, I didn't have no input. I don't know what's going on. I have, no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I've, I've always, I've always been, been a fan of El Rey. I've, I've always watched it for, you know, for, for personal reasons, you know, um, first of all, I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, and, uh, just the content they have on the channel is, is, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's almost like geared towards, you know, the, 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 the Latino, you know, demographic or the age demographic, you know, um, um, and I enjoy it actually. So I, I once, I thought to myself, I told my, my chief business officer, I told him, um, you know, it, it would be great, uh, because we have a lot in common. We, we do a lot of things for our culture, you know, and it would be great if, if El Rey, because El Rey is like the king, you know, and, 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 and I always felt that, that I was the king of boxing when I was fighting, you know? And so, um, I, I always thought, I told my, my chief business officer, um, you know, why don't we get a hold of them and, um, and, and pitch this idea of, of showcasing the best uh, Hispanic fights um, in, in, the, in the last 20, 25 years that we've been promoting. And sure enough, it worked. I mean, this was, this was, a, this was a, um, a negotiation that, 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 you know, happened fairly quickly because we had, we had the same vision and so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited that it's going to take off um, this weekend um, on Friday, uh, May 4th, around the, around the uh, Cinco de Mayo festivities. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting. I, I can't wait to watch these, these great classic fights. Me too, because I wasn't around when some of those were going on. I mean, I was, wasn't in the sport yet, so I'll be watching them for the first time. And I think a lot of people might be watching them for the first time. And there's quite a few fights, including one of your own. Is there one in particular that you feel like fans really need to tune into that particular fight? Oh my God. We have, I mean, the library is thousands and thousands of fights, hours. Um, there's so many, so many. Good, I mean, all the Pacquiao fights, all the, uh, um, all my fights. I mean, my gosh, there's so many, me and Vargas, um, me and Shane Mosley, me and I Corte, me. And, there's there's so so many, but but you know what I'm actually thinking now is that the content that we're gonna give El Rey, the the, the viewing audience, is gonna be different than what what what's ever you know uh, been out there before. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give you different content that you're gonna be, be able to enjoy the fight. You're gonna see the fight from a different perspective, you know. Um, um, and, and I can't wait. I, I literally can't wait because, uh, it's just, it's never been done before. That's amazing. There is actually another really big fight coming up this weekend that you're, oh. you're a part of. Can you give us a little preview of what you are expecting to see this weekend? Okay. So Cinco de Mayo weekend is huge for boxing. I mean, uh, and huge for, for, you know, us drinkers, um, um, so, so imagine a fight and, and getting together with your family, with your friends at home, pay-per-view, it all started, man, it all started probably when I was fighting, you know, uh, Cinco de Mayo and Julio Cesar Chavez, when, when we were both fighting, um, we decided let's, let's make this a big holiday. Let's make it a big boxing festivity. So this weekend, um, for the first time in many, many, many years, we're going to have two Mexicans in the ring, two Mexicans in the ring who are at the highest level. Jaime Munguia, who's like 46 and 0, Canelo Alvarez, who's the king of boxing, Mexican boxing. Um, are we going to see the passing of the torch? You know, are we going to see the young lion, you know, just, you know, beat, beat the, uh, the reigning, you know, champion supreme. I mean, it's, it's uh, a lot at stake uh, this weekend, but all in all, I don't care like where you're from, you know, what culture, what, whatever you can enjoy a Cinco de Mayo weekend with a great, great fight. How did the fight actually get made? Cause I think a lot of people are, are curious because we, you know, we know that there's things are not quite happy all the time with you and Canelo. So how did this fight <laughs> come about? Um, so, so this, this was, I'll give you an insight. This is, this is actually a, an exclusive, Ooh. um, so, so one thing about Canelo is that if you, if you talk smack, right, about him, 
oh yeah, you're going to get beat this, that he won't give you the fight. Like he'll say, forget you. I'm not going to fight you. You're, you're talking smack about me. But if you're politely about it, if you're like, you know, okay, you know what? Canelo's the greatest, uh, you know, it would be an honor. So the fact that me and Canelo have beef, you know, and I have a fighter in Munguia that wants to fight him. Okay. How do I strategize here? How do I, how do I maneuver, you know? So yeah, I had to, I had to, you know, bite my tongue and say nice things about Canelo and, and, uh, and, uh, and praise him and this and that. And, and sure enough, it worked and he picked them. So I, I think, I think Cinco de Mayo weekend, look, Munguia hit the lottery, which I'm very, very happy for because he'll make a lot of money and he'll have a chance to prove his skill to, to, to hopefully grab that torch from Canelo and 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 just continue to to raise it up proudly for the Mexicans. So yeah, it's exciting times, and and I'm glad that it's two Mexicans in the ring because it hasn't happened in such a long time. So yeah, we're pretty we're pretty proud of that. But it took a lot of skill in my part. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that that it happened. We're excited yeah. for it. And Thank by you. we, I mean everybody on Earth that's watching this fight is going to be really excited. Um, and, you know, you're coming off another really big win with Ryan Garcia. I, I'm wondering, have you spoken to him lately? Do you know kind of what the plan for him is? I know it's fight just ended, but everybody yeah. wants to know, when can we see him again? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, Ryan Garcia right now is on his victory tour. <laughs> uh, he's uh, I, he's promoting his his single, uh, I'm Blessed, uh, which which is, uh, it's brilliant. I mean, he's he's a brilliant marketer. I love the guy. Um I'm going to sit down with him. Yeah. Once, once the dust settles after this week, uh, I'm very busy this week with, with Canelo Munguia, but um, after this week, I'll sit down with him and uh, yeah, we'll strategize and we'll, we'll see when he wants to fight again, but most likely a big date would be September uh, for Ryan Garcia. Again, the passing of the torch, you know, Ryan Garcia being the next champion of the world, the Mex the, the next Mexican American, you know, champion to carry the torch. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, strategy, uh, that has to take place. And, um, I, uh, I have to sit down with his team or with him in particular and, uh, and just map it out, map it out. And, uh, and we'll see who he wants to fight next, but I'll tell you one thing, the next opponent that he'll choose, um, is going to be an, another champion, another, another, you know, worthy, you know, champion that, uh, that has all the tools, um, um, you know, to even beat him. So, and that's who Ryan is. Ryan's a fighter who wants to take on the very best. And I have to admire that because it doesn't happen very often in boxing. You know, there was some big boxing news today with the rule set being announced for the uh, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. I'm just uh, yeah. curious what your reaction was to that. If you've heard what they are. Tyson, move your head. Just move. Don't get hit, please. I love Mike Tyson. And now that there's no headgear, Jake Paul, I guess he he gained a lot of muscle lately. Um, he's going to be strong up there. So just be careful, Tyson. But then again, Mike Tyson landing one punch, he can end it all in one round. So I think it's going to be a fun fight. I think, um, you know, until it lasts. I'm not sure how many rounds it is. I believe eight or ten rounds. But I, I do have to worry about Tyson and his conditioning, you know, because, I mean, Tyson and myself are no, no spring chickens anymore. So, uh, you know, we, we have to be careful with uh, with uh, with these young fighters out there who want who want to take off our heads. Um, yeah, I wish them all the best. They'll make a lot of money. They'll they're they're attracting a whole new audience, more eyeballs to the sport. So, yeah, more power to them. You know, uh, back to Ryan Garcia, he, Sean O'Malley in the UFC really wants to to fight. Is yeah. there is there any interest with you? Would you be willing to co-promote with Dana White? Because I know there's not a great feelings there either, but yeah, you know, saw it happen. So could it happen there? Look, I mean, I, I think I think that I think it could happen. Why not? If it's going to be a huge event, um, I my I can leave my ego at home and deal with Dana White, I have no problem whatsoever. Um, but I just don't think that Dana White would want to do it. You know, I'm, I, I think that I think that Dana White knows that O'Malley will get will just get outclassed. That's that's the bottom line. I mean, if it was in the cage, maybe it would be a whole different story because O'Malley, is, he's a he's an MMA fighter and Ryan Garcia is a boxer. There's a huge advantage there for Ryan. So 
Um, I think I think Dana White has learned his lesson, um, you know, watching the Nganu fights and watching, you know, MMA fighters trying to box and getting beat up. Um, yeah, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's it's not it's a whole different sport boxing and MMA. So I, I think that, yeah, if Dana ever wants to sit down and talk and maybe make something happen, I'm more than happy to do it. Awesome. Last question for me, you know, uh, Conor McGregor just announced, I think Saturday that he, Oh, who, who's here? Oh, look at <laughs> my little baby. Hi, my oh. Hi, my <laughs> oh, hi. hi my <laughs> well, Conor McGregor. This is, this is little Vita. Hi. Hey, yeah. I've got cats somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little nuggy. Cute. Uh, Connor announced that he has uh, become part owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting, BKFC. Is there any interest in maybe potentially partnering with him for something? Not Maybe not as the fighter, but uh-huh. in a promotion type. Realm. Yeah, whatever whatever makes sense for, for the sport of boxing. I mean, I, I'm a huge advocate of boxing. I love boxing. This is the sport that gave me everything. I, I'm going to be a promoter till the, the end of time. I, I you know, if, if I can do anything to help the sport, um, yeah, I would be more than happy to talk to anybody. I mean, Conor, Conor McGregor is now a businessman, which, which I love and admire because, um, you know, because he comes from the fight game as well. And so, um, yeah, if, if there's a chance of talking to him, um, I've spoken to him many times, but uh, not about business. It would be great. It would be great to sit down with him and maybe map something out um, if it makes sense. But uh, yeah, more power to him. I, I admire what he's doing. Um, I just want to see him in the ring again. Me too. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you this weekend at the fights. Sounds good. Thank you. Have a, have a great week. Bye bye. Right. Appreciate it.